Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Deuteronomy is a book written by Moses, the fifth book of Moses. This is the last book of Moses. Moses will die at the end of this book. Deuteronomy is, is the second given the law. Everyone that wandered 40 years in the wilderness have died. They are on the other side of the Jordan River. There is Jericho. The next book is Joshua. They will go into the land. So what Deuteronomy is doing is preparing the new children of Israel with the laws and regulations when well, they go into the land. Now Deuteronomy also does more than Leviticus and Exodus and Numbers because it is them going into the land. No more wandering. So the fifth book of the law. The next book is Joshua. Jehovah saves, carrying them over into the new land, promised by God. Chapter 1. It's the new generation of, of the Jewish people into the promised land. But Moses has to die first. Joshua's got to bring him in. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan, not the promised land side. This is the eastern side of the Jordan River. In the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea. Between Paran and Tophil and Leban and Hazareth and Dishab. And I got to note Hazareth. This other mentions. These are the places where they are right now. Again, they're on the other side of the Jordan River. There are 11 days journey from Mount Horeb, Horeb, Mount Horeb, by the way of the Mount Seir of the Kadesh Barnea. That's where the spies. 11 days. That parentheses are very important. This side note. And it came to pass on the 40th year. I mean, it took. 14,600 days when it says it's an 11-day journey. And the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according to all the Lord had given him in the commandment unto them. 40 years later, here we are. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon. And Og, the king of Bashan, that guy shows up all the time, which dwelt in Ashtoreth in Ardriel. On this side, Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, this law, Deuteronomy. This is a law. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and unto the places nigh thereto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in 
and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. All right, go in. Land's there. It's yours. Moses can't go in, though. It's the title deed. Leviticus 25, 23. And I spake unto you at this... At, at, yeah, I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for a multitude. You can't count them. And the Lord God of your fathers made you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and blessed you as ye have promised you. you know, they're still having babies. These are the children 40 years ago. All the people over 20 have died. And there's still a vast number of them. How can I myself alone bear your encumbrance? That's uh, hindrance, em embarrassment, obstruction, and your burden and your strife. Take you wise men in understanding and know among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. Okay, after their introduction, the first thing we look at for the children of Israel, they're going to go into the land. The first thing we lay out is the law court of judges. That's the first thing spoken about. And it's the law. And we're going to look at what the court system is. Because there's going to be, even though you're going to the promised land, a bunch of children of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Achan, Abraham, you get in that land, you're not going to be without difficulties. You're not going to be without trials. You're not going to be without, you're going to have to have people who are going to have to judge those people in the land. And you answered me, he said, the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. Now he's revealing everything that's going on. In chapter 1, we're going to look at history of the nation of Israel. And it's not been hindered and it's not been changed unless you've got a modern Bible. And the first thing that Moses does is we got the law, we need judges. The second thing is we got a history. And before I send you into that land in the hands of Joshua, I want you to remember your history. And that's very important because in this day and age of 2018, the world wants you to forget your history and the world wants to rewrite history. And I can imagine as we look at Deuteronomy, how the modern Bibles, and I have not looked at it, I don't care to look at it, how they've changed the history by removing, adding, footnoting. So I, this is Moses, took the chief of your tribes. Twelve tribes. Wise men. If you're going to set someone in as judges, they need to be wise. And known. People know who they are. And made them heads over you. Leaders. Captains of thousands. Captains of hundreds. Captains of fifties. Captains of tens. And officers among your tribes. There are people are put in numbers, and there are heads of those people as numbers of heads and people. And I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren. You got a cause, you bring it to the judges. And judge righteously between every man and his brother. So another thing you have to have for a judge if you want to be a nation under God, is you got to have wise men and you got to have righteous men that know righteousness from unrighteousness. And the stranger, the Gentile, that is with him. You can't snub away the Gentiles. They may have an honest case before the judges. And it may be that the Gentile was going to win the case. Against the Jew. And if that's the case. As a judge you still got a rule. In the case of that stranger. Even if he's in the right. Could you see Jonah and Peter. Being righteous judges. In this point right now. Absolutely not. And they're both good men. 
there was a prejudice in Jesus' time. There's a prejudice against their half Jews, the, the Sumerians who were half Jewish and half Gentile. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. Oh, that guy, he, he's a famous football star, so he gets off. Oh, he, he plays golf, and we'll just give him a, a, you know, a little dollar fine. Where somebody who is unknown gets the full max of the law. But ye shall bear, I mean, excuse me, ye shall hear the small as well as the great. And that don't mean size. That means the little guy that, you know, all he's doing is taking care of his family and his, and his and his house, and he, he's got nothing. He, he's not in politics. He's not well known. He just your common ordinary man. He's homeless, maybe. He has no money. He has nothing. He's the small, as well as the great, the king, the rulers, the priests. In the New Testament, the time of Jesus, the small be ill those sinners. Doesn't Jesus know he that, that, that he's eating with the sinners, the publicans, ill, as well as the greats, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the scribes. He shall not be afraid of the face of man. If he's guilty, he's guilty. If he's innocent, he's innocent. Nothing more. For the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you. Bring unto me, Moses says, and I will hear it. There's your Supreme Court system. All right, we tried this case and we can't get anywhere with it. We need help. Then you move up to a higher court. Your court system is out of the Bible. We got little circuit courts. And we have places in this country called states. We get, Then we get the state courts. And then even if it's too hard for that one, then we've got the Supreme Court in the land. And Supreme Court hears those cases. Only that, hey, you know what? It wasn't solved right. We don't think it was right. We don't think that this jurisdiction did right. You don't walk into the Supreme Court and say, you know, my friend owes me 12 bucks. And I want my money. That would be to the judges. And I commanded you at that time. All the things which you shall do. So he took these men off the side. And he explained to them. He gave them a education on the law. And when we departed from Horeb. See this is all history too. This actually happened. And Moses has these men that are in charge. We departed from Horeb. We went through all the great and terrible wilderness, which he saw by the way. Right, you saw it. The mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnelia. Uh oh. That's number 13, 14. Here's where the trouble began. Here's where your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, this is everyone that you saw die by the way. And the people of your grade 12 of high school that are still alive. <laughs> and I said unto you. Now watch this. We're going to learn more information here. Ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites. Which the Lord our God does give unto us. Behold the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up. And possess it. As the Lord God thy fathers has said unto thee. Fear not. Need be discouraged. Okay. Here they are in Kadesh Barnea. Moses says go. God says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Go. There it is. See it. Go. We're going to get a little information now. Get that. Moses said, there it is. Go get it. And you came near unto me, every one of you, and said, we will send men before us. And that shall search out the land. And bring us word again by which, excuse me, by what way 
we must go up, and unto the cities we into the cities we shall come. Let's go to Numbers 13, verse 1. Let's look at this. Something don't sound right. And people say, well, there's a contradiction. Numbers 13, 1. And we'll just start, let's give a little footing, chapter 12, verse 15. Yeah, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out before the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Mary was shut out before the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not to Mary was brought in again. And afterward the people removed from Hazareth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send out men, that they may search the land of Cana, which I give unto the children of Israel of every tribe of their fathers. Shall ye send men, a man, every one a ruler amongst them? And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all those men. Wait a minute. In Numbers 13, where we are in the land of Canaan's Barnelia, it says that God said, send the men into the land. Twelve of them. Each man of the children of Israel, the tribes. And when we come back over to Deuteronomy, it says, Moses, go! And the people said, Moses? Yeah. Can we send somebody into that land to look it out? Wait a minute, Go! And what you get with, with both verses put together is not a contradiction. It's God speaking to Moses, send them. I know what's going to happen now. And you got another story in the Bible, and I'm not going to call it verbatim, but we want a king. And Samuel goes to the Lord and says, Lord, they've sinned. They have asked for a king. And God's like, they haven't rejected you. They rejected me. Go ahead and give him a king. Had they right here where Moses said go and never done the tribe thing of the spies. Let's see. Let's look at two points here. Uh, 23 verses, 23 chapters of your Bible would not need to be written. There are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of the Mount Seir unto Canaan's Barnelia. And it came to pass the 40th year. Because they said, when Moses said, go into the land. Can we send somebody to go in here and check it out for us? 40 years. And when the people came to Samuel and said, we want a king. And look at all the years of, of, of Saul, King Saul, wasted. Until the Lord finally set someone on after his own heart, David. And verse 23 of Deuteronomy, and the saying pleased me well. There's no prayer. And I took 12 men of you. One of a tribe. And there's no mention of God. As Numbers 13 says. Somewhere along the line, God said, go and do it, but I know what the trouble is going to be. And you're going to see Joshua's going to lack prayer. And we lack prayer in our lives. Verse 24, And they turned and went up into the mountain and came out to the valley of Eskel and searched it out with more history. More history. And it's not been changed. And they took the fruit of the land in their hands. Remember those big grapes? And brought it down unto us. And brought us word again and said, it is a good land. 
which the Lord our God does give us. That's great. Notwithstanding disobedience. He would not go up. Look at that. The last words that Moses spoke before those spies. Go! After the spies, you would not go. You have rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And when the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel, Christians have rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And he murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, hated us, go, there it is. He has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into a land of the Amorites to destroy us. No, that's a lie. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart. See, not mind. The heart. Saying the people is greater and taller than we. And they are. The cities are great and walled up to the heaven. And they are. And more we have seen the sons of the Anakin's giants there. So what happens to the whole book of uh, Joshua? Doesn't Joshua win battle after battle after battle after battle after battle? The book of Joshua, the, the next book after Deuteronomy, which we'll study Lord willing, disproves what they just said here. And every time we lack on God, and every time we, we draw on God and murmur in despair because we cannot do it, and God is able, we get nowhere. But get charged rebellion. I, I do it too. I look for I look to tomorrow and oh Lord God, I can't do it. And I look at God already doing something today. Then I, Moses said unto you, dread not. That's interesting there. Because in this day and age of 2018, they got a hairdo called dreadlocks. And the Bible says, dread not. Neither be afraid of them. Don't be afraid. And that's another sin in the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, they do not get total obedience of God by wiping everybody out. They start fearing and making comebacks and, and promises and fail. The Lord your God, which goeth before you. Did you forget about that? Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, I can't do that. Don't you know the Holy Spirit you're supposed to pray to go before you when you go? The God that has seen tomorrow, the God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He knows what's already going before you. Why are you fearing? Why are you disobeying? He shall fight. For you, book of Joshua, David, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before. Did you remember Egypt? Do you remember that big darkness and you saw over there? You had light. Did you remember all their animals dropping dead? Did you remember all those flies? Did you remember that God protected you? Did you forget about the blood? Did you forget about this? Did you remember that? Egypt finally said, get out of here. Here, take some gold, silver, everything. Get out. Did you forget that? Because as God fought against Egypt because he loved you, he's going to fight against those people in that land because he loves you. Did you forget that? 
Friend, you need to write in your Bible prayer answers and your prayers in your Bible. You're supposed to read your Bible every day. You're supposed to remember, count your blessings, name them one by one. There was darkness. There was water turned to blood. There were flies. There was locusts. There was animal deaths. There was that night that the firstborn died and we were protected by the blood over the door and we left. We remember the time that Pharaoh's army drowned in the river. We remember the water was made sweet. Remember we had quail. We had the manna. One by one and God can't do it today. I'm sorry. God can't do it today. And I fall into those hands too. And in the wilderness where thou hast been how where now yeah, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bear thee as a man does bear his son in all the way that ye went until you came unto this place where we are right now. How on earth did they survive in that wilderness without a Walmart and a McDonald's? Feeding them. Did you forget that you went out there and that manna was there? And everybody had their food by, by a standard of weight. And then for the seventh day, the sixth day, there were two portions given to you. Did you forget about that? Did you look at your feet and see that you did not need new shoes? Have you looked at your clothes? The Bible says that they did not wear off on them. You forgot that. That ye went. Until you came unto this place, and yet, yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God. Who went in the way before you to search out a place to pitch your tents in. In fire by night to show you by what way you should go in a cloud by day. Now, he went the way before you and search out a place to pitch your tents. That's a shepherd. When a shepherd leads his flock, Psalms 23, and they're feeding in the meadow, and they're drinking by the, by the river, that shepherd will walk off into the next place he's going to feed the sheep. And he looks around for broken glass. He look, looks around for, for poisonous plants. He looks around for things that can harm his sheep. Pastors don't do that today. And when he makes that place good for them to dwell in and eat and drink by that water, he, then he brings them sheep to that next place. And then he goes off again and looks around and prepares that ground. And the sheep have no idea what he did. They just enjoy the labor of the shepherd of love. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. He hears what you're saying. Every idle word, Jesus said, and was wroth and swear, saying, I don't know how many times God gets wroth with me because of my words. Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see the good land. Which I swear to give to your fathers. They're dead and gone now. By Deuteronomy 1. This is that generation. This is their children. Save Caleb the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it. And to him will I give the land. That he has trodden upon. And to his children. Because he has wholly followed the Lord. Caleb. Yes sir. Come here. Explain to his children what happened. Explain to these children why everybody in that generation died but you. And you were one of the tri you were one of the spies. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sake. Look, look how Moses blames them. Your sake. Uh, no, Aaron, uh, Moses, you got upset. Saying, Thou shalt not go in thither. The Lord can't get you in. But. Jehovah saves Jesus Christ, Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee. Here he is. He shall go in thither. Encourage him. Oh, don't do what you guys did to me. For he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Look at that. There's the king. 
I know Joshua is not a king, but Jesus is the king. Will sit in Jerusalem. So there's Joshua. There's Caleb. The only two adults, elderly adults, besides Moses. And everybody else has dropped dead. And their children are standing there looking at them right now, listening. More of your little ones. Here they are. Which ye said shall be a prey. Oh, God's going to kill our children, our wives. Oh, my. And your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil. That's how young they were. What about the children? Looks like they get through. They had no sin. The parents did. The grandparents did. They shall go in thither. Here they come. Here they are. And unto them will I give it and they shall possess it do you realize the only two men that's going into the promised land that can sit with his grandchildren and tell them about the good old days would be joshua and caleb only everybody else they died only the young ones that's why we're getting the history back again they got to know the history. But as for you, turn you and take your journeys into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Turn around. You're not going in. Then he answered and said, and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God has commanded us. And when ye have girded on every man his weapon of war, ye were ready to go up to the hill. It's too late. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up. Lord, Look at all those crowns those people are getting. Lord, we'll go and tell people about Jesus now. You're not going down there. It's been done. I got 144,000 will do that job now. You had your chance. For here, it's a, it's a, it's a piece of land. You had your chance. For the Christian, you had your chance to get. It's the same word, go. And when you're losing crowns, you can't get them back. These people cannot go back. Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you. Least you be smitten before your enemies. They're going to battle without God. And guess what will happen? So I spank unto you, and ye would not hear. Look at the, the rebellion. God said go. They don't go. God says don't go. And they go. But rebelled against the commandment of the Lord. And I preached a message about that Saturday morning, about the rebellion against God. God told Adam, don't eat that fruit. And Adam did. God tells you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And you won't. The commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously up onto the hill. And the Amorites which dwelt in the mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do. I've been chased by bees. And destroyed you in Seir, even unto Horma. So the dying has started or had started. And he returned and wept before the Lord. But the Lord would not hearken to your voice. Nor give ear unto you. There's coming For many people, whatever the story is, there's coming a day they're going to weep before God. And God's like, I don't care. I told you. 
And many, the Bible says, will be at the great white throne judgment. Where God, please, then we do the, then we do the, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never heard you. Shut up. That's harsh words. Well, Lord, I want to get a crown. You had your chance. God's holy. God's long suffering. But when God says it's it, it's done. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according to the days that ye abode there. And we'll pick up more, Lord willing, as we prepare the children that are now adults. Some of them are 60 years old. Some of them are coming on 40 years old and still being born. And all the parents, all the grandparents, the aunts and uncles have died off. Only Joshua and Caleb remain of that group. 